It's the Scooter Lee Happy Hour, a show full of country music, country dances, and a whole lot of country fun. <laughs> Coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia, USA, the honky talk twister herself, Miss Scooter Lee. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the show. And boy, have we got a show for you today. My special guest instructor is all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. CMT's Joe Thompson is going to be teaching you the Louisiana hot sauce and the West Coast shuffle from my Honky Tonk Twist album. Our videos are the Bellamy Brothers and Shine Them Buckles and the biggest dance hit I've ever had, thanks to you. Now, if you're an instructor, a dancer, or both, you're not going to want to miss our question and answer segment. And while I'm over here at the video jukebox, I'm going to take you to that big hit called Honky Tonk Twist. and welcome back. That honky tonk twist is one of the most popular dances that I have out right now, thanks to you. And this next lady that I'm going to introduce you to, it's like, what can I say about her? She's been teaching for over 16 years. She's one of the finest choreographers that I know. I've had the pleasure of working with her all over the world. Please welcome from Nashville, Tennessee, Miss Jo Thompson. 
Hey, Peter. How, how you are doing? you? I'm doing fine, Joe, and how are you? I'm doing good. You're lucky, mighty lovely, may I add, Well, actually. thank you very much. Yeah. It's my new little suit that I just picked up I for like the show. That. I like that. Now, Joe, when I introduced you, I said she's with CMT. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you do with CMT? Um, I work actually both for CMT, Country Music Television, which is the video channel, which is now available worldwide, and also for the Nashville Network, uh, TNN. And what I did for them, about five years ago, CMT came to me and that this line dancing craze was really just beginning to get started really well in, in the States. And they wanted a signature dance. And they said, would you choreograph us a special dance? And so I did. I did the uh, CMT's Dance Ranch Romp. And I think a lot of people don't realize that that was what it was for, actually. And so we used this dance as a, a contest dance, line dance. And we went to different cities uh, promoting CMT. And also, the, the, uh, because the enthusiasm for line dancing was so, so high and growing, uh, uh, and, I mean, we had just hundreds of people entering the line dance contest and having a good time doing it. And I've been, after that, been able to travel. Uh, CMT took me to Australia and New Zealand. We did launch parties mm -hmm. for the yep. network there. I just returned from Hawaii. We, we did a launch party from T for TNN, the Nashville Network. And uh, I love to travel and I love to teach. And so I'm getting to do both of my favorite things, I guess, that way. And now you're probably one of the finest choreographers that we know in the business. Oh, go on. No, no, see, now, I've worked with this lady, and it's like, you know, they call me the line dance queen you're everywhere right, I do. go. They but do. The, but they the do. bottom line is she truly is one of the line dance queens, choreographing a dance called Cowboy Rhythm, which has now become a standard like Cruising and Tush Push. And she's mm -hmm. done the Midnight Waltz, and she did the Baby Once I Get You, mm -hmm. which was nominated Dance of the Year, and she's worked on the dance that she's going to teach today. Mm -hmm. Now, you worked with a guy named Gordon Elliott out of Sydney, Australia. Right. And Joanne Brady, who will be appearing on one of our next shows. Right. And y'all put together this really cool dance called the Louisiana Hot Sauce. Right. Which goes with your song, He's My Little Jalapeno. And, and it's got it's got a Cajun rhythm. It does. It does. I, th I think this has probably just been one of the most exciting projects that I worked on to be able to work with some other choreographers at the, at the same time. And the fact that we did this in Australia, it was out in the parking lot under the shade of this big eucalyptus tree, whatever it was, and it was just, it was so exciting to have the, the minds of the three choreographers coming together, and Max Perry had a little input with it, too, and it just, it was really exciting to see With the it. pressure of the artist, yeah, was saying, of it saying, we gotta have it tomorrow, yes, we yes, gotta yes. have it tomorrow, but you are so, you're so cool when you instruct, and you're so cool when you choreograph, because, you know, there are a lot of uh, songs that artists write, and you'll say, like, Oh, you can tell that's an Alan Jackson tune, or you can tell that's a Garth Brooks mm -hmm. tune. It's like your dances, you have certain things that people go, they know it's a Joe Thompson mm -hmm. dance. And mm -hmm. I think that's like... Cool. Well, you know, when you've been doing this, I started choreographing when I was like seven years old. And I had this whole collection of Elvis albums. And I'd pull out my Elvis songs, and I would put it on, and I would just make up these dances. I'd make my family watch and put on little shows. <laughs> and so I, I really had a long time term experience doing it. And uh, it's fun to, for me to be able to walk into a place and see people I have never met or seen before doing something that I created. Which we're going to do right now, because we're going to let Joe Thompson take you to the Louisiana Hot Sauce, which is one of the hottest dances around around the world right now, thanks to you because you're promoting it really well. So let's take it to it. Let's do it. It's got um, a turn right at the beginning of the dance. So what I'm going to do is start facing you and then you'll be able to follow along. We'll start with the left foot, putting the heel down on one. Drop the toe on and, tap the heel twice, two, and. Reverse that with your right foot, three, and, four, and. Here's that turn. Cross in front on five, Turn one half to your right, six. Notice I've shifted my heels to the left side. Twist, seven and eight. Clap the hands on count and. All right, let's try that one more time together. Pay attention to the footwork this time. This is a little different. It's a heel, toe, tap, tap, heel, toe, tap, tap. Then you cross, turn, the heels go to the left side, twist, 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 clap. All right, ready to go on. This is the next set of eight. I call this Cajun jogs. The weight is mainly on the balls of the foot and you will step forward. At this point, you've shifted your weight to your right foot. The left foot is free, step forward. One and two and, it's a little hop, three and four and. Going back, step behind on five and Six is a little skip crossing behind. Rock back on the left foot. And seven is a stomp forward. My hands go out. This means you're safe. You made it. That's count seven. And you hold 
eight. All right, let's do that count again. We'll start with the Cajun jogs. The heels are over on our right side. We just clapped our hands. We have one and two and three and four and five and six and seven, hold eight, all right? That's a little bit tricky because it is kind of syncopated, so you might wanna practice that. Make sure you have that stomp on count seven and hold eight, and you can smile too, that's all right. After that, we will do cross rocks and paddle turns. The right foot is out, you cross over on one, and two, reverse it, three and four, five and six, Six, I turn one quarter to the left, and this starts into what we call a paddle turn, and seven, you rock onto the ball of the right foot, turning around, and eight, you repeat that to finish the paddle turn. So all of that together, the cross rocks and paddle turns, one more time, watch that. That's the left foot across, one, and two, three, and four, five and six and seven and eight. Now, guess what? If you can do that on the left foot, you can do it on your right foot. So we're gonna reverse everything starting with our right foot. We're gonna cross rock again on the right. One and two, three and four, five and six and seven and eight. That was the right side. You wanna try that one more time? Get the right foot free. We'll do the cross rocks, the one and two, three and four, cross five and six and seven and eight. The left foot is free when you finish. Guess what? That's the end of the dance, yay!
Are you a line dancer or a wannabe line dancer? Here is your chance to learn the correct way to line dance. Joe Thompson of CMT takes you through the 49 most common components used in line dancing worldwide. Having problems mastering the Applejack, the Sugarfoot? It's all right here, plus 47 more. If you've got a VCR, you can line dance. The Ultimate Line Dance Reference Video is the only true technique reference video for country western line dancers and instructors. When you go out dancing or you go take a class, all you have to do is put these components together and learn the dance and you'll feel great out there on the dance floor. Since 1299 plus five pounds shipping and handling to Scooter Lee Enterprises. Post Office Box 941505, Atlanta, Georgia 31141. Or fax us with your credit card information to 404-634-1726. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. You know, it's no big secret how important country dancing is to country music. And we're proving it in this next video of the Bellamy Brothers, who are using the three-time world champions, Robert Royston and Lorreen Baldovi, dancing in the video. So you take a look and see if you can pick them out.
today Q&A means questions and answers for those of you who don't know what Q&A means. So what we're going to do is take you to a couple of really cool questions that Joe Thompson's going to answer for us. Uh -huh. uh, one of the questions, Joe, is traveling around the country like y'all do, you see a lot of dances being done differently mm -hmm. than the way they were choreographed. You're right. What do you do about You're that? You're right. That's a tough one. It really is. And, and I think it, res it relies on responsibility from a lot of different areas, on the teacher, on the choreographer, and on the student. The teacher needs to be sure that we do our research. We shouldn't take our job lightly, obviously. We have students that depend on us. Okay. They come yeah. to our class, and, and they think that we're teaching teaching them what's correct. And uh, sometimes if you throw a, a lesson plan together at the last minute or if you're reading the step description as you're teaching it or something, you're not doing your students any justice. And I take my job very seriously, you take your job very seriously, and I, I would beg of, of instructors all over the world to do the same. Because if you teach something wrong, it's like a mushroom and it just expands and expands and, well, and it's going to be tough because... You it, know, I get frustrated, I don't mean to interject here, but I get frustrated when I'm out performing and I see instructors teaching a dance the way it was not written, mm -hmm, especially mm -hmm. one of my dances. It's like, what can we do to change that? They, you know, they get out there and, and, and they decide they want to change it. Right. It's Well, it's not up to them to change. As, as a choreographer, you need to put together a good step description that's easy to read. It should be free of mistakes or typos or whatever. Read it a thousand times and have ten different people check it for you before you publish it. Because that's where some of the mistakes get, get started. But what about a high impact? Is wrong. What if you got a high impact dance and you have an instructor who can't teach in high that's impact true. dance? That's true. Some people don't like to do the bouncing and the jumping and all this stuff, but their students want to learn it because, you know, they're seeing whoever Susie Cream Cheese down the road is teaching it. Why well, you teach it yeah. us too, right? And I get that a lot also. Uh, it, you don't have to be able to do personally the dance at the level that your students are going to do at it. Say, you know, say I uh, don't like to do the running man step, but I've got 16-year-old kids in my class who love yeah. to do yeah. it. If I can demonstrate it and show them the idea and the technique of it, then let them take it and run with it. I shouldn't change the dance because I'm not able to do it myself. I can show it to them one time. I could get through it one time probably yeah. and demonstrating yeah. it and just realize that you're not going to be able to do uh, everything as, as a teacher and uh, you shouldn't change something just because you don't like it or you don't change, teach something else if you don't like the dance exactly don't teach it. exactly and okay so we got Susie Q over here who's going to her very first line dance oh what she's is she scared. yeah she you know she because she really is, she mm -hmm. likes watching it what, what, right. what can she expect uh, hopefully she's gonna search out a beginner class don't yeah. if you're a beginner dancer don't go to an intermediate or advanced class go to a beginner class and there's a lot of classes out there structured just for beginners and uh, are there instructors out there who, who specifically teach beginner classes? I think there are a lot, yeah, and you just have to search for them and look for them. And uh, know that when you're learning dance, it's just like any skill. It's going to take time to develop it. And that's the beauty of line dancing and couple dancing is that you can take it to any level. You can do the beginner dances and be happy with that. If you like a challenge, you can do the advanced dances. But just find your level and find where you're happy and stick with it. Now, you're, gonna te you're fixing to teach us what we call a generic dance, mm -hmm. which is done to many, many different songs. Right. And it's called the West Coast Shuffle. This is one of my favorite dances because I love West Coast Swing. West Coast Swing is a couple dance has a really nice groove to it, about 130 to 140 beats per minute, and this line dance has that feeling to it. You gotta have a little, you know, groove going. It's nice. Well, so get out on the floor and teach us. I will. All That's right. Groove. <laughs> All right, West Coast Shuffle. This is one of those line dances where you got to have a little attitude when you do it because that's really what makes it nice. I see this one everywhere I go as I travel the world, and it's choreographed by a gentleman from Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, Greg Underwood. It's 32 counts long and faces four directions. Let's try it. West Coast Shuffle, starting with the right foot. This is actually the footwork for a lady sugar push in West Coast Swing. So we'll walk forward one two, kick, three, step back on four. This is a coaster step by stepping back on five, closing sit on and, and stepping forward on six. Then you repeat that same thing. Walk, walk, kick, step back, coaster step. So from there, ladies, if you know that footwork, you can do a little bit of a, a, a West Coast swing with your partner if you want. You already know one step for couple dancing. Then after that, we'll do four steps in a swivel walk, one, two, three, four. Then we're going to do slow points to the side, right and hold, left and hold, two quick ones, right, left, and double kick with the right foot. Then with the right foot, step back, putting the weight on the ball of the right foot, turn a half to the right, that was one, two, 
then the right foot goes back three, and we turn a quarter to the right on four, then this is the last part of the dance. With my right foot, I'm gonna step out to the side, five, and then I'm gonna swivel the heel, the toe, and then step together on eight. And that's kind of tricky, so make sure you pay attention to that. We're facing our new direction, I'll do the whole thing facing here. The sugar push is first, walk, two, three, four, coaster, five, and six again, two, back, step, and your coaster step. This is our five, six, seven, eight, slow point, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, eight, back, one, turn, two, three, turn, four, slide, five, six, seven, eight, and we're walking again from the beginning, all right? Now, again, this is one where you can really get that groove going, a little attitude and everything, and just put your personality into it. The nice thing about West Coast Shuffle is that any song that has that West Coast Swing type of a beat, you can do this to. But one of the best, of course, is by Scooter Lee, Bebop Balula. How about we give it a try? Bebopalula, he's my baby. Bebopalula, don't mean maybe. Bebopalula, he's my baby. Bebopalula, he's driving me crazy. Bebopalula, he, he, he's my baby love, my baby love, my baby love. He's the one in the tight blue jeans. He's the king of all my dreams. He's the one that I love. Why, well, he's the one that yells for, 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 for me. Bopalula, he's my baby. Me Bopalula, don't mean maybe. Me Bopalula, he, he, he's my baby love, my baby love, my baby love. special guest this week was that little dancing darling herself, Miss Jo Thompson from Nashville, Tennessee. We'd also like to thank Inner Sound for the Bellamy Brothers, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye. Questions for Scooter's Q&A segment can be faxed to 404-634-1726 or mailed to this address. For a copy of this show, send $12.95 plus 5 pounds shipping and handling to Scooter Lee Enterprises. Post Office Box 941505, Atlanta, Georgia, 31141, USA. Scooter's happy hour guests stay at the Ramada Plaza Hotel, the only resort-style facility offering the very best in affordable luxury guest lodging anywhere in Atlanta. production.